Well, of course, it didn't take long for the blame game to begin after the devastating fire at 80 Albert Street in the early hours of this morning. Speaker of the City Council, Colleen Macobella, spoke first this morning, and she clearly blamed the people who were in that building. Former Joburg mayor also spoke earlier today, Herman Mashaba, singling out one NGO in particular, blaming it for stopping the city from evicting people from hijacked buildings during his time as mayor. OK, so let's bring in that NGO. SERI is the Socio-Economic Rights Institute of South Africa. It provides legal advice and representation for poverty-stricken communities and individuals. And I'm joined now by its senior attorney, Kuliliwe Bengu. Ms. Bengu, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure you've heard uh, a lot of criticism, not just from Herman Mashaba. He's one of the politicians um, that has blamed Seri in particular. He says you stopped his attempts when he was mayor to try and manage hijacked buildings. What's your response to that? Hi, Celeste. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's so very unfortunate that at this time where there's a loss of over 70 lives, instead of the state taking accountability and trying to see what steps can be done, firstly, to assist the poor families who've lost their loved ones and who've lost their homes, and to try and evict someone from their home, there must be a judicial procedure. You can't use race as a way of intimidating people from their homes. And it's the constitutional courts that said, this is unconstitutional. It violates the right to privacy. It violates the right to dignity, and it's used as a tool to get poor people out of the city. Mm. Yeah, so what you're saying, essentially, is instead of blaming you for merely following the law to protect your clients' rights, uh, they should blame the law. It does seem, though, the law is now coming under scrutiny. A little earlier this evening, the president himself was asked about the PIE Act, which is the uh, Prevention of Illegal Evictions Act. He was asked if it needs a relook, and he said, yes, we need to look at it Again, there is concern that this act is too onerous, that it's not practical. Um, what are the alternatives, though? Because we've also heard about a bylaw in the city of Johannesburg which can help prevent people living in a death trap building, which is the problem property bylaw in Johannesburg, which basically says if you are aware as the city that people are living in a building that is actually dangerous and could kill them, you need to get them out of that building. So how do we deal with both those pieces of legislation, the bylaw on one hand and the PI Act on the other? So it's, it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned the bylaws because as Seri, we have been trying to get the city to enforce the bylaws in the bed buildings in the inner city so that the conditions of the buildings are improved and that the lives of the people living there are much better than they currently are. But the city has been very recalcitrant and hesitant to enforce the bylaws. What we have seen over the years, and even this year, is the politicking of, 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 of different MMCs using these buildings as if they want to do something. I'll make you one example, Sally. In one of the buildings on the corner of GP and Nugget Street, the MMC went there earlier in the year. We represent the occupiers there who are currently facing an eviction. And the matter is currently in court because the city is failing to provide alternative accommodation for poor people. And they said that they would audit the people and find alternative accommodation. When we made ourselves available, we asked the occupiers to be available. The MMC and his attorneys were a no-show. I don't think that the two pieces of legislation are at odds with each other. In fact, they assist each other because even in the bylaws, the bylaws don't envisage that when you, the city tries to rehabilitate the state of the building and improve the conditions, the people will be left out in the streets in the cold. The bylaws envisage that people should still be a priority. Their rights in terms of housing should still be a priority and they should be provided with accessible accommodation, which is what the city is failing to do. It, it has been very hesitant to provide alternative accommodation. The problem is not pie. If we're saying there's a problem with the pie act, then we're saying there's a problem with the constitution. Mm. You would remember, Sally, that the Pi Act comes immediately after our constitution as a replacement for the previous act, which was called the PISA Act. That act did not protect any rights of the unlawful occupiers 
despite their history on the property. It only focused on who's the property owner and you get out. And no alternative for the purpose. The Power Act actually brought things in line with the Constitution. You're saying the bylaws are not being enforced by the city. One of the allegations we're hearing from the Joburg Property Owners Association is that there's a lot of corruption in the city of Johannesburg, and that is why there's a reluctance uh, to move sometimes on these hijacked buildings, that they get paid off, so they turn a blind eye. The reality is the city of Johannesburg and the police must have known that this particular building was hijacked because someone was arrested in 2019. Eventually, he was not prosecuted. The authorities knew that this building was hijacked and unsafe. Do you believe, as others do, that corruption is playing a part here? Stella, I, I certainly do believe that corruption is, is playing a part. Um, but what is playing a much bigger role is the lack of political willingness. This is not the first time we see this. And it's certainly, unfortunately, not the last time. In 2018, there was a building just a few blocks from this building in, in Davis Street, where a wall fell and saw the death of, untimely death of three minor children. Mm. And in that building, we also represented the occupiers. We had engaged with the municipalities to try and get it to provide alternative accommodation. We had identified one of the people who was trying to extort money out of the occupiers who had claimed to be the property owner, who was clearly a hijacker. The city knew him by his name. The city had his identification. But to date, the city has done nothing about that person. So it begs the question, how many people are extorting money out of poor people who are desperate to be in the city, to be closer to employment opportunities? And the city is sitting on its hands and doing nothing because of corruption and the lack of political will. And in my opinion, more than those, it's just no desire to see poor people in the inner city. And hence, every time we have such discussions, the city's solution is to always get poor people out of the city. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. Senior Attorney Kululiwe Bengush from SERI, that's the Socioeconomic Rights Institute of South Africa. Stay with us.